Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a polynomial system. So we have 2x plus x squared y equals y, 2y plus y squared z equals z, 2z plus z squared x equals x, and we're going to be solving for real values of x, y, and z here. So this system can be simplified by solving each variable in each equation. For example, not each variable in each equation, but I should say uh, for example, consider the first one, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. 2x plus x squared y equals y. So we can basically solve this equation for y. And the reason why we don't go for x is because x is quadratic and y is linear. So it makes more sense. So what I'd like to do is basically, you know, isolate the y terms on one side. So I can just go ahead and subtract y minus x squared y. And then if you go ahead and factor out y here, you're going to be getting something like 1 minus x squared. And if you divide both sides by 1 minus x squared, you should be getting y equals 2x over 1 minus x squared. Well, of course, what we did in the first equation can always be, can easily be replicated to the other ones because of the uh, type of the equations that we have. So what does this tell you? So this type of equation should give you a message. And that message is trigonometry. What kind of trigonometry message are we talking about? Well, here's the thing. If you go ahead and replace here x with, for example, tangent alpha, what is this going to give you? Well, you're going to be getting something like y equals 2 tangent alpha over 1 minus tangent squared alpha. And what does that look like to you? Doesn't that look like the double angle formula? It does. So this is equal to tangent to alpha. Well, how do you know that x is equal to tangent alpha? Well, since x can range anywhere pretty much between negative infinity and infinity, except for two values that are not allowed, and those values are plus minus one. I know some people are going to have an issue with the plus minus the way I write it, but I always write it that way. But anyways, so x cannot be those two values. Other than that, it can be pretty much anything. And tangent, as you know, can be pretty much anything, right? So we can safely say that x let x equal tangent alpha. In other words, I'm not saying x is equal to tangent alpha. We're just supposing that, uh, you know, x is equal to tangent alpha. And obviously, from here, we get a really nice result. Gives, uh, what, what this gives us is y equals tangent to alpha. So it's really neat because we got a trigonometric uh, equation. Now, we're going to turn this into a trigonometric equation, of course, but we have to continue doing this, right? For example, if you look at the second equation, what happens if you go ahead and manipulate it the same way? You're going to isolate the z and then divide, uh, you know, factor out the y squared minus 1 and divide both sides by that. So that's going to give you what? z equals 2y over 1 minus y squared. Now, you got to remember here, y is equal to tangent to alpha based on the assumption that we had for x. So x is equal to tangent alpha, y is equal to tangent to alpha. And if you go ahead and substitute that here, you would be getting something like 2 tangent to alpha over 1 minus tangent squared to alpha. And isn't that the tangent uh, double angle formula again? Yes, it is. But this time for 2 alpha, so you're just going to double the 2 alpha, and that's going to give you tangent for alpha. Great. We're not done yet because we still have one more equation to handle. So we got z equals tangent for alpha if we assume that z x is equal to tangent alpha. So we got the values of x, y, z, but we still have to continue because we have another equation. So let's go ahead and take a look at the third equation now. So the third equation is basically going to give us x in terms of z, right? x from here is going to be 2z. I can't make the joke 2b, right? Because, oh man, I should have chosen b as a variable. But anyways, we always make it, so that's too much. 2z over 1 minus z squared. Great. And what do we know about x and z here, right? Well, we know that z is equal to tangent 4 alpha. Let me go ahead and copy that here so we can see it all together. Well, we know that z is equal to tangent 4 alpha, x is equal to tangent alpha, and y is equal to tangent 2 alpha. If you replace z with tangent 4 alpha, you should be getting something like 2 tangent 4 alpha divided by 1 minus tangent squared 4 alpha. Great. Well, what is that supposed to mean? Oh, no. The double angle pops up again. Well, isn't that tangent 8 alpha? But what is that supposed to mean? Didn't we, didn't we already have a value for x? Well, we did, but it doesn't hurt to have a second one, right? Because what we can do is we can set those equal to each other. And this is the beauty of trigonometric substitutions. That's why trigonometry is awesome. If you disagree, please comment. Okay, cool. So now x is equal to tangent alpha and x is equal to tangent 8 alpha. 
which implies that tangent eta alpha is equal to tangent alpha. Okay, great. So this is a trigonometric equation, no longer polynomial, even though polynomial equations are easy, this equation will not be necessarily that easy, but as is, it's pretty simple, right? I mean, how do you solve this equation? Well, there are many ways to solve it. You can just set the eight alpha and alpha equal to each other, add the k times pi, so on and so forth. But let's do it in a more artistic way, and let's go ahead and write the following. Well, what is the value of tangent? Oh, okay, maybe I should choose that. I don't know. What color should I choose? Okay, let's go with this one. You can't go wrong with white, right? So how about, oopsies. So we said that tangent eight alpha is equal to tangent alpha, right? So what am I gonna do now? Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and write down the formula for tangent seven alpha. How am I gonna write it? Well, I will use the difference formula. How about that? Well, we do have a sum formula. We do have a difference formula. We do have a double angle formula. We have all these identities, right? So why not use them? So now if you, Think about this, tangent x minus y is equal to tangent x minus tangent y divided by one plus tangent x times tangent y. But what do you know about tangent eight alpha and tangent alpha? They are equal, great. If two things are equal, then their difference is what? Zero. From here, we get tangent seven alpha is equal to zero. Beautiful. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, if you think about the unit circle, you know that tangent is zero when sine is zero because tangent is equal to sine over cosine and sine is zero on the x-axis because that's for cosine. So here and here. So basically multiples of pi, right? Okay, great. So from here we can safely say that, well, seven alpha needs to equal k times pi where k is an integer. So let's go ahead and replace k with um, non-negative values and then see which values are gonna be good for us, right? For example, you can replace, you know, k with zero, seven alpha equals zero, that's gonna give us alpha equals zero. If you replace k with one, let's go ahead and try that out, it's gonna give you seven alpha equals pi, from here you're gonna get pi over seven. So you're basically going to be working off of multiples of pi over seven, which I can list as two pi over seven, three pi over seven, four pi over seven, five pi over seven, and six pi over seven. What happens when you get to pi? Basically, it's just gonna cycle because when you think about the tangent value of alpha, either tangent zero or tangent pi, doesn't really matter, they're both zero, therefore the other values are also gonna be the same. So we don't really need to go through this anymore. We're basically getting like all these seven values for alpha. But we need to find the x, y, z values, right? Exactly. So how we can find them is Basically, we're gonna remember uh, how we use substitution here. We said that, okay, x is equal to tangent alpha, y is equal to tangent to alpha, and z is equal to tangent for alpha. So they're just gonna double and double and double. So x is equal to tangent alpha, y is equal to tangent to alpha, and z is equal to tangent for alpha. Now, if you consider the first solution, that's gonna be easy because you're gonna basically gonna be getting zero, zero, zero. And you're gonna notice that if you replace x with zero, y will be zero, and then z will be zero, so on and so forth. This is a valid solution. But if x is equal to pi over seven, for example, then we're gonna be getting something like tangent pi over seven. Then we're gonna be getting tangent two pi over seven and tangent four pi over seven. So we're basically gonna be get our second, second, what's it called, order triple, from these values and this is just going to continue. By using the alpha values, replace them, here we're gonna be getting all the ordered triples. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.